I'm in Pagbara in Satun province again. It was almost exactly a year since I was here last time. It's a holiday in Thailand tomorrow. It's a Buddhist holiday. Just one day off. My wife was desperate to go somewhere. And the Andaman coast is a lot more attractive than the Gulf Coast. And it's not really worth driving the five hours to Grabi just for one night. The nearest places are Satun and Trang. So we've decided on Satun and we don't really have enough time to go to any of the islands. So we're just gonna spend the night in Pagbara. I'm quite interested to see what the tourist situation is like here at the moment. Uh, last year it was very quiet, very few people. At the hotel we just checked in and there was one Farang. Most people here seem to be local Thais. I just had a chat with this group over here. They're from Yala province, Beitong. And they just told me about a, a new Skywalk attraction that's opened. Sounds really good, it's got a glass floor. So I went to uh, Patani recently and I'd, I'd like to get down to Yala and Naratiwat sometime. Uh, the hotel, we had to show vaccination certificates. It's the first time I've had to do that. But I've, I've heard the same from other people recently who have visited tourist resorts. They're all asking for the vaccine certificates. And tomorrow I'll take a bit of a walk around the pier area where the boats go out to um, the islands here and try to gauge what the tourist situation is like. I really like it here in Pagbara. The, the beach is really nice. If you go over to the east side of the peninsula, Songklar and other places, the beaches just aren't attractive, but they're, they're really attractive on the Andaman coast. It's quiet here, very few people. Um, there's some great seafood restaurants. There's plenty of accommodation, which is very cheap. And best of all, it only takes, well, it takes less than two hours to get here from Hat Yai, so it's very convenient. So it's quite practical to come here just for a, a one night trip. <laughs> Lovely little place. I think we're going to eat at the same restaurant as last time because it was very good. And as you see from the little sign in the top here, uh, Halal. This area has a huge Muslim population. And when you're driving through, you see a lot of, a lot of mosques, not many temples. And all the shops and restaurants here seems to be run by Muslims. So if you are Muslim and thinking of visiting Pagbara, the food is no problem at all. Papaya Mum. However, this being a Muslim restaurant, there will be a problem for some people. This sign, it's just in Thai, it's not in English. Ham Nam Alcohol Kauma Nairan Kopkun Ka. It says don't bring alcohol into the restaurant. So as I say, that might be a problem for some people. The restaurant is right on the beach and it really is a perfect little spot. Food's very good as well. There's a view of the restaurant from the beach. And there are actually tables on the beach, one of which my wife has chosen. So it looks like tonight I will be eating dinner on the beach, just a few feet away from the Andaman Sea. Can't be bad. I've lived in Thailand for a long time now, married with two children. And it's very easy to lose track of what it was like to come to Thailand as a tourist. These days, life seems to revolve around the children, their education and keeping them entertained and amused when they're not studying, keeping the, the house going. You know, I'm always finding things to fix there and to tidy up and clean, keeping two cars on the road. There really isn't much time for rest or relaxation. But this little trip has reminded me of what a good position I'm really in. As I say, it took less than two hours to drive here. It's cost me very little. You know, it's um, not much petrol and the accommodation was very cheap. And for a lot of people around the world, coming somewhere like this 
would mean an enormous expense and a lot of time to get here. So I really need to keep that in mind, uh, not to take things for granted, to count my blessings, and even when life does get a bit difficult, just to remember what a good position I'm really in. It's a bit rude to point the camera, but I've just walked past a restaurant on the beach and there's a big table full of farangs, about a dozen of them. And I didn't see any at all last time I was here, about a year ago. So, as has been reported elsewhere, it does seem as if the uh, tourists are returning to Thailand. The food has started to arrive, and here we have some sweet and sour fish, bla priwan, and the fish is in pieces, so they, they, they refer to that as penchin. And if it's a whole fish, that's pentua. And over here we have tortmangung, which are shrimp cakes, there's like a sweet sauce to dip them in. And over here is gang som. There are regional variations with Thai food and Gang Som is a southern Thai dish that you might have difficulty finding elsewhere in Thailand. We also ordered a whole fish so this one is Pen Tua as opposed to Pen Chin. This is Pla Gopong which is a snapper and it's uh, steamed in lemon sauce like Pla Nung Manao. I'll just give you a very quick tour of the hotel and this is the Bara Bara budget in Satun and there's one suite in the hotel and that's what we had last time and it's a lovely room it's a really big room but there's only one double bed which isn't ideal with young children so this time we've taken a smaller room and this room's got one double bed and one single bed so in here will be me my wife and my son and my daughter is staying with my wife's friends. It's a similar room, but it's slightly smaller and there's just two single beds. And this room, I believe, is 1,400 and the smaller one is 1,300. Shower and toilet. And outside there's a swimming pool, which I believe is open until 10 o'clock at night. There's small, smaller rooms opposite. It's a really nice place. I think it's only been open about two years. Exceptionally clean and reasonably priced. And there's a little bit of parking outside the hotel, but further on the road, they've got their own car park with 24-hour um, security. So that's where my car is parked now. Yeah, it's a good, good little place. Some more tourists just showed up at the hotel. So the, um, the Farangs are definitely coming back to Thailand which I guess is a good thing. And they arrive by Songtel, and most tourists will arrive by a taxi or minivan or Songtel without any transport. And many are tempted to rent a motorbike. And this hotel operates a motorbike rental service. If you do rent one, just be very, very careful. When I say be careful, it's not just because of Thailand's lethal roads. The driving is utterly insane and between 20 to 25,000 people lose their lives on Thai Road every year and most of those are motorcyclists. Uh, there, are, there are other reasons. I just had a chat to the receptionist in the hotel about the uh, motorbike rental. It's 300 baht a day, that's um, 24 hours. You got your bike. I also asked her about insurance. Um, there, there isn't any. So, if, you, if you're involved in an accident and you do a lot of damage to the bike you will be responsible for um, getting that repaired. If you do damage to another vehicle you're responsible for getting the other vehicle repaired. If anyone gets hurt in the accident then you're responsible for their medical bills. If you hurt yourself you have to pay for your medical bills. In, in most cases there's not going to be a problem. You'll, you'll rent the bike have a nice day out and then give it back and you know that, that's the end of the story but if in the event you are involved in an accident it could cost you a lot of money so 
just be very careful and I've been driving here for a long time and I know how tyres drive and I anticipate what might happen and it keeps me out of a lot of trouble. If you don't know how tyres drive and you can't anticipate in the same way you can get yourself into a lot of trouble. This is the pier area and I've had several people approach me this morning asking me where I'm going. I'm not going anywhere so I haven't got time. And they tell me there are Thai tourists but no Falang tourists. But there are, I've seen quite a few around already but they're just not here so maybe they're not going out to the islands. Someone who works for the army division that controls the southern border was telling me that they were just about to open the border again and uh, virtually on the same day there was another big surge of Covid in Malaysia and Indonesia so they've, they've put it on hold again, it's been postponed and they're now not sure when the border will open. This is the screening point and everyone has to show a vaccine certificate and be wearing a mask. Now, call me cynical, but I've seen lots of reports that show that these masks don't really do anything. And Thais are fanatical mask wearers. So in that case, why were there huge outbreaks of COVID last year if they were all wearing masks? And regarding the, the vaccination, the vaccine doesn't stop you getting COVID or spreading COVID. So you might have been fully vaccinated a couple of months ago and got the certificate. Since then, you've contracted COVID and you're spreading it to everyone. But because you've got that vaccine certificate, that's fine. They'll accept you. It just doesn't make any sense to me. My wife and daughter went back to school last week. My wife's a teacher, my daughter's a student at the same school. So I thought we were getting back to normal. On Wednesday night, there were a lot of late night phone calls. My wife was in bed on the phone all the time. And um, it turns out that on Wednesday, she talked a girl who was later tested positive for COVID, Omicron. So what the school did, they contacted everyone who'd been in contact with this girl and told them to stay at home. Then my wife had to be tested and she wasn't allowed back until yesterday. Now, I find this concerning because if you look at the symptoms for Omicron, it's um, like sore throat, cough, itchy throat. It's basically a cold. And in the past, if you had a cold, you know, it was not a problem. You felt uncomfortable for a few days, but just got on with life. But now, they've called a cold something different, and everything stops. And in the past, they've never been able to cure the common cold, or to eradicate the common cold. And that's the same with this Omicron. They're not going to be able to eradicate it. So at some stage, they'll just have to acknowledge that it's something we've got to live with. But at the moment, there seems to be no plan to do that. So I'm really not sure when this is all going to stop. Despite only living a couple of hours from this place, Pag Bara, I still haven't been out to the nearby islands, which are supposed to be really gorgeous. I've heard people comparing them to the Simulan Islands, which I have been so. So that's a problem I need to fix, and hopefully there might be an opportunity later this year. This is the place where they prepare and send out supplies to the islands. So here we have some essential supplies, such as toilet rolls and beer. And I'm not sure what happens about electricity out on the islands. Years ago, on Samui Island, every bungalow operation and restaurant had its own generator, and then they laid an undersea cable. I'm guessing it's the same here. There's probably an undersea cable going from the mainland out to Lipe. Here's the entrance to the pier and Lipe is very developed for tourism. Taru Tao Island is a national park, very natural. You can stay there but I understand the accommodation is very basic and because it's a national park there's an entrance fee and here are the prices and as usual in Thailand we have dual pricing. So Chao Thai, Thai people 
Dak Yusipat, children 20, we are adults 40. But if you're a foreigner, Chow Tung Chat, uh, children pay 100 and adults pay 200. And that's, this is very, very common in Thailand and it goes on absolutely everywhere. There's some timetable and pricing information from where we are in Pak Bara. And the guy has just told me to Taro Tao, it's about 35 minutes, and Li Pei, it's about an hour and a half. So there's two boats in the morning, uh, 9.30 and 11.30, two boats in the afternoon, 1.30 and 3.30, and then similar times coming back. And the prices, so to Li Pei, um, 650 one way, 1200 return. Taro Tao, 400 one way, 700 return and although i saw some foreign tourists yesterday and also at the hotel this morning i haven't seen any at the pier so i'm not quite sure what their plans are whether they intend going out to the islands or not on this boat it's fully loaded with thai tourists who are just off to lipe the boat looks pretty basic there's a roof to keep the sun off you and some bottled water there's uh, not many other facilities. Still, it looks quite fast, and you, you'll just want to get there as quick as possible. is the Taro Tao Visitor Centre where you can get information and make reservations and years ago I went to the Simulan Islands in Thailand for livable dive trips and I've heard several comparisons between the Simulans and these islands here and one of the islands in the Simulans has a very uh, similar rock formation to this one on Taro Tao and the Simulans is, is a sort of world-renowned dive site and if you look at the map for the islands around here you also see a lot of dive sites. So if you're into scuba diving or just snorkeling, it'll be a fantastic place. It really does look beautiful. And I say, I need to get there at some stage. Outside the pier area are the, the usual travel agents and um, souvenir trinket shops. There's also a small clinic if you um, have any medical problems. There's a young girl here who looks Looks to be having an, an ATK test where they stick the swab up your nose. Not very pleasant and she's crying. I had a bit of a problem at breakfast this morning. But it's not unusual in these places where there aren't many falangs. It's the same when we go to uh, Tali Noi in Patalong. And I, I don't mind Thai food for lunchtime in the evening. But I just can't stomach this sort of stuff for breakfast. And there's nowhere open that did a western breakfast. There was a place last time called the Barista. Barista Cafe, but it wasn't open this morning, so I just had breakfast at 7 this morning. This is not my idea of breakfast. Our short one night stay in Park Bara is almost over. The kids have had fun in the pool. I've had a little rest. On the way back, we're planning to stop at a restaurant that's been recommended by a friend, and then we'll be heading back to Hat Yai. We abandoned the restaurant recommendation. It turns out it's a 60 kilometre drive in the opposite direction to going home, so it's just not worth it. So we've decided on one of the restaurants in this long strip of restaurants along the beach at Pagmara. The, the food is fine and the location is perfect. So I hope you've enjoyed this quick update and found something useful. With regard to the tourist situation, there are a few tourists around, but there's still a long way to go to get back to normal. So as usual, thank you for watching. If you have any comments, questions or other feedback, please leave them below and there'll be more videos soon.